Hello friends and citizens of the internet. Today we get to taste yet another new apple from my breeding project. I'm pretty excited about this one, so let's find out what it's all about. About nine and a half years ago, I started an apple breeding project. I made cross pollinations, I planted seeds, and then I waited, and I waited, and I waited, and I waited some more. So why would I do this when the results are unsure? Like you don't really know what you're gonna get out of these seeds and it takes such a long time. Well, part of the reason is that I'm not sure what I'm gonna get out of these seeds. Apple genetics in particular are extremely diverse, so it's like exploring a vast territory where you just don't know what you're gonna get. So it's always that adventure of, what's around the next corner, what's over the next hill. Well, it turns out that this is what was over this particular hill, I guess, and now I get the gratification of tasting this, uh, naming it, and then eventually sharing it with you guys. So this actually bore for the first time last year. I'm going to cut in a short segment of me tasting this uh, last late October. Grenadine with an unknown parent, 2011, number nine. It looks like it's a gold rush cross because it has these, which is uh, something that Golden Delicious has, and Gold Rush is a Golden Delicious offspring. So I think we're seeing the Golden Delicious genes assert themselves here. All right, let's go. This apple's overripe. It tastes like kind of, it's very similar to an overripe uh, Golden Delicious. You can see though that it has some pink flesh there. I hope you can see that. It's good. Actually, the flavor is really good. It's just the texture has gone kind of soft and mealy. I mean, it's not horrible. Like I could definitely eat it if I was out hiking and I found these, I would eat a bunch of them. But the flavor is very nice and it's very sweet. It's a good sized apple. It's a nice looking apple. Let's take a look at the uh, scab. This has some sunburn. That could be bird damage. I think I want to try a different one because I have. I feel like this one I'm eating is, is maybe a little over, more overripe. Wow, really good and really extremely sweet. So we probably need to be eating this more like early to mid-October. Obviously it didn't inherit Gold Rush's late ripening and keeping abilities. I hope you can see right here, you see that pink blush? That's the red flesh underneath the skin. This also has some grenadine traits like these speckles. You see these big white speckles and also the nose. You see the, the way that if you look down at this way, you see how it has these ridges like that? That's from grenadine. And sometimes they'll be almost like a Roman nose, like sticking out the side. So this shows traits of, you know, multiple involved parents. I mean, I'm like 90% sure this is a Gold Rush cross. And it doesn't really have that weird yellow apple taste that a lot of waxy yellow apples get. So this is actually somewhat promising. So you'll note in that video, I said it was overripe in late October and it was probably gonna be an early to mid October apple and that's proving to be true. It looks like it's pretty much right in the middle of October here. Now this is almost certainly a grenadine gold rush cross. It has characteristics of both parents uh, in appearance and other things. Like gold rush, it appears to be completely free of scab. I have not seen a speck of scab that I can recall on this apple, not this year, not last year. It may be that it could get a little scab in the future, but where it's growing in the trial rows, they're very crowded. I let all the leaves fall. It's totally infested with scab. Like some of the apples get scabbed so bad in there that there's no good apples on the tree at all. And this is from completely clean. So that's quite a, an accomplishment and a big bonus for this apple. Now I have seen uh, some sunburn on this apple and it looks like the sunburn that we see on Gold Rush, its parent. So here's some right here, it appears. That's a problem in my climate if the apples are exposed, but I harvest plenty of Gold Rush and it has a tendency to sunburn like that. And it's just a matter of keeping a dense enough canopy on the tree um, and making sure the apples aren't just mostly all out in the full sun. It has a beautiful yellow skin when it's ripe. It uh, almost has like an inner glow and almost some whiteness to it. Uh, it also has a lot of speckles. One of the uh, proposed names on Instagram was Freckles, which I thought was a really cute name. It also has a russet top, so you can see some uh, russet here. There's some more russet on the bottom. Interestingly, that is enough to get this kicked out of a breeding trial, like a commercial breeding trial. They've been trying to breed that characteristics out of apples for a very long time. Uh, I think it looks neat. It, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, that just shows you how weird the modern world is that you would 
reject perfectly good apples out of a breeding trial just to get a certain look. I mean, this is going to X a lot of apples out of breeding trials, let alone a whole bunch of other stuff. Like the tree producing a lot of different sizes of apples is kind of unevenness. They wouldn't like that. You know, there's just so many things that go uh, against an apple making it through a modern breeding trial and into the stores. And that's one of the reasons we need to keep breeding apples ourselves is so that they don't just dumb them down and just throw away all these genetics uh, after these stupid narrow goals that really don't make any sense. I've also seen a little splitting on a couple of these. Some had splits in the bottom around these pleats. This one has a split at the top. I'm guessing that that's really from a combination of drought. We had a really bad drought year this year. I didn't irrigate these trees until September, which is just super late and dry. And probably when they got that hit of water, they swelled a little bit and popped open. Hard to say. My guess is that's not going to be any kind of a serious problem, though. This also bore two years in a row, which is good because last year was a really good year. This tree bore a lot. I had a lot of apples, a lot of seedlings, I think 55 fruited. This year, very few apples just all around. It's just a bad apple year, but this still managed to produce. I also have another Grenadine Gold Rush cross that is a real consistent producer and has produced, I think, three years in a row. Now, it didn't produce as much as it did last year, but it looks like there's a good chance this probably inherited that trait from Gold Rush of being just a good steady producer. And that's also, along with the scab resistance, a really good thing to have in an apple. And one final thing before we taste it, it does have pink flesh sometimes, but I've only seen it last year at the end of the season. I haven't seen any this year. My guess is that it's going to start to just express a little bit when the apples are becoming overripe or on the edge of uh, too ripe. We'll see if we see any today, but I'm not real hopeful that that is going to be a major, you know, trait of this apple. However, the genes are there, right? So for further breeding, if we take this and cross it with other red flesh crosses or whatever, the gene's lurking in there and it's expressed a little bit, so that means it can express again. And so in carrying on further breeding, if this turns out to be some kind of great apple and I want some of the characteristics of it uh, in another apple, then I can use it uh, to carry that red gene forward in more breeding uh, efforts. I have four specimens here today, but these are the two we're going to try. Now this one's more ripe. It's got a little squish to it, like it feels almost rubbery or slightly dehydrated. It has more scent in the top here, while this one has very little. So this is definitely less ripe. This is extremely firm and just, it feels here hard and spanky. This one is thunky, right? Think. Thunk. So let's taste the less ripe one first and find out what this is all about. This has a very firm, crunchy, pretty dense, almost hard flesh, fine grain. It, this one's pretty um, sharp. It's not, I wouldn't call it a sharp apple really, but there's quite a bit of acid in this. And this still has uh, quite a bit of starch in it. And so the, the starch is having converted fully to sugar yet. It's really not ready. It probably would have benefited from a week in the refrigerator or something like that or a few days on the counter. Okay, I see just a, a hint of pink flesh right here on the corner, just barely anything. It has a nice flavor, uh, maybe some melon, maybe a little spicy, uh, but again, the flavor is not really well developed. Let me taste over here. Okay, so right where that pink flesh was, was the ripe part. It was probably the part that was getting the most light. A lot of people don't know that apples don't ripen evenly. They actually ripen um, differently across different parts of the apple. Now in this part, I'm tasting lemon. This year when I first tasted this apple with someone else, we both tasted citrus in there. Later I tasted another one, I think yesterday, definitely had a lemon flavor. It's not really powerful, but it's definitely there. So this riper part is starting to get the aromatics, right? It's starting to get the full development of the flavor and aromatics. It's more spicy and it has that like a uh, little hint of lemon in there. Now let's see what this one is like. This reminds me of a very ripe gold rush. Um, it's not mealy or mushy or anything, but it's starting to get, the texture isn't what it was, it's a little rubbery. So I'd say if anything, the flavor in this one is starting to go down a little bit or about the same as the ripest part of this one. I'm not really getting a lot of the lemon flavor in this one. So that may be a trait that just uh, expresses a little and shows up here and there. 
in some apples, in some years, you know, at some ripenesses. So, uh, but it's still very good. Both of these are very good, uh, you know, eating apples. Like, I really don't see that anyone would have much complaint about them. All right, we're going to try a third one just because I'm too curious not to. And one more. we got to try this one, too. I almost looks like there's a little red here. All right, so just to kind of overall assess this apple, it has a really nice, hard, crunchy, fine grain texture. I like that a lot. The sugar, it's pretty sweet. I've measured it twice at 21.5 and 23% sugar. It uh, has still a lot of refreshing acidity to it. It's a nice, balanced eating apple. The flavors, um, there's that lemon flavor, which I wish was way more prominent because it would make this apple absolutely delicious, but it's really fleeting. Like, I noticed it right away when I first tasted this this year. Like, right away was the first thing I noticed. And then I did notice it again later. Today, I just noticed it in this one, though. And then as I ate more, I just can't even pick it out anymore. So my guess is that's not really going to be a major feature of this apple. Could depend on growing conditions. Could some years and not other years. Could in some you know specimens and not in others. We'll see. But my guess is it's not going to be like this major feature where uh, it's worth like naming the apple lemon something or other. Same goes with the pink flesh. It shows up occasionally. There's some in this one. It doesn't really affect the flavor a lot. Um, my guess is it's never again going to be like a major feature of this apple that you know you can kind of point to. Which is too bad because if it was I could name it pink lemonade. How would that be? Yeah. Oh well. And flavor wise it's it just a really competent good yellow apple I guess. It doesn't have any of the negative characteristics that sh sometimes show up in yellow apples like there's a, a certain flavor characteristic that I can't describe but I don't like it. It definitely has some of the flavors of like Golden Delicious which comes through Gold Rush because that's one of Gold Rush's parents and Gold Rush in particular is kind of like taking a lot of the best flavor traits of Golden Delicious which is really delicious at its best off the tree and not stored and you know turned mushy and sold in a store. Gold Rush kind of amplifies those, they're more complex, they're more spicy. Uh, there's nothing wow or nothing sensational or per peculiar about the flavor except that little hint of lemon which who knows maybe someday that'll develop but I'm gonna guess not. Given the fact that it's scab resistant and especially if it bears every year there's definitely a place in my orchard for this apple at this point. I've already propagated it. Uh, it was promising enough last year that I grafted it out right away to another tree. I'll probably graft a couple more branches uh, just to have it for eating and also for further assessment in better conditions like on an established tree growing out in the sun and not in these trial rows. I mean this tree is just like this little treeling that's bent over just hanging there almost touching the ground. You know I don't water it. I hardly fertilize them. It's in pretty bad shape. So it could develop more and taste a little bit different. But even under those conditions here I get these beautiful uh, you know scab free uh, specimens. Wait a minute is that scab? Yeah, I see a few very small spots of scab here, so maybe I was wrong about it being totally scab resistant. Very small though. It's, scab is certainly not going to be a major problem on this apple. I'm probably going to name it soon because I like having names for apples so I can talk about them. And uh, I think this is certainly worth naming and worth growing unless some weird cultural thing shows up or some disease just annihilates it. It turns out to be super susceptible to uh, anthracnose or something like that. I'm going to go grab some aged cheddar and finish these guys off.